I'm Owen Big Line. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, I, I hate to beat a dead horse to death here, but I've got to do another blog here on buying pre-sale condos in Vancouver. I've done probably 10 of these over the last five or six years. If you're a regular watcher, you guys know I haven't been a big fan of pre-sale for a long time now. It used to make a lot of sense. Go back and watch some of my blogs from four, five, six, seven years ago on uh, the advantages of buying pre-sale. But that all changed probably seven or eight years ago. You used to get pre-sale below what tangible market uh, or tangible product was selling at, and then they flipped the script on it. Now you're buying it for far more than what tangible product is. You know, of course, there's going to be people that buy pre-sale, move into it in three or four years, and the price has gone up 100K. Great. I've had that happen myself. I've got lots of clients into those situations. But for every one of those, there's also ones you buy it. By the time you get the keys, it's worth $200,000 less. It's a coin toss. But there's just not a lot of advantages to buying pre-sale. Uh, and I, I won't go through all of them here. Go back and watch some of my blogs. I just did one a couple of months ago, uh, an update on pre-sale condos. Um, you know, the only way, there are some situations where pre-sale can make sense. A, it's a very special building that you want to get into. In other words, your office is right across the street or your parents live a few blocks away. Or it's a very special unit. A, let's say it's a luxury unit with unobstructed views that can't be replicated or very difficult to replicate in the tangible market. Although I see very few of those these days. Uh, they, are, they do come up every now and again, special buildings, special units, but for the most part, you can get something like that or close to it or just wait a few months for something tangible to come up that'll probably be a better value. But another wrinkle here. So I've got several uh, lawyers that have I get regular emails from. My office also has legal counsel. Uh, not all offices in Vancouver have that. I'm in a big brokerage, so we're always getting updated on uh, any changes to the Real Estate Act and, and what to watch out for, con things in the contract, clauses, tax changes, all that good stuff. Both my lawyers and two of my clients, because they know how I feel about pre-sale, sent me this. There is a new wrinkle now that has been put into pre-sale contracts. And I had heard about this about a year ago. I did those blogs, you know, about how all these, there's 30 or 40 developments that have been approved in downtown Vancouver, but you're not seeing anything getting built right now. Because I had talked about how it's so difficult for developers to put together a pro forma, meaning, okay, we bought the land for X amount. This is what it's going to cost us to build. This is the materials, the labor, the pre-sale costs. This is what we have have to market or sell or price every unit at to make a profit. And it's almost impossible right now because inflation is running wild, supply chain problems, labor shortages, insurance skyrocketing, interest rates skyrocketing. They can't figure it out. So this has come across my desk from two lawyers here. Uh, so basically, Owen, just to let you know, we have currently seen a, a price adjustment clause being added to pre-sale contracts recently. Without getting into all the details, if the building construction pricing index rises by more than 4%, the developer has the right to raise the price by the amount over 4%. We want you to warn potential buyers, because I don't do a lot of pre-sale anyways, as you guys know, if they are considering the purchase of a strata unit uh, that is yet to be built, that they should be aware of this. So gee, this is just another example of, I've been talking about how everything is weighted towards the developer. And you better believe they're going to use this clause. With the prices going where they are now, and it's probably, I haven't seen the con any of the contracts, as I've told you guys before, when you buy pre-sale, you're not using a standard contract to purchase and sale. You use the developer's contract, and that contract is all weighted towards the developer. They can put whatever they want in there. You have, you have no recourse with it. They give you the disclosure statement. You use their contract to purchase and sell. So this will be written in all the contracts. It will be probably vaguely worded, and they'll probably use it for any number of reasons. C construction delays, material increases, zoning and holding cost increases. There's a myriad of things that, they, that will probably trigger this 4% uh, 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 overrun, which they will add on. So, you know, that was one of the few advantages left with pre-sale 
was you buy it and you move into it in four years and hey, if everything goes well and the market's in your favor, uh, it's worth more than what you paid for it. But now they've got another wrinkle in here, a clause that they can raise the price. The price you pay at pre-sale isn't necessarily the price you're gonna get. So be very careful with this, folks. Again, I think there's far better value in the tangible market. It doesn't have to be old. You can go into some of these stratas that are one or two years old. Uh, and it's tangible now. You can negotiate the price. You can negotiate the GST. You might not have to pay the GST. If it's over a year old, you probably won't. If it's under a year old, make sure you got a good realtor and write the contract properly. But be careful with it. It can, again, pre-sale can make sense in some rare cases. But you know, the other thing is if you're gonna buy a pre-sale and it meets those things, it's a special unit, you wanna be in that neighborhood, there's nothing else in the tangible market, you have to A, make sure that you can close on that home. Uh, in three or four years, they, the, the, you know, the construction times keep getting longer and longer and longer. It used to be you buy a pre-sale and you move into it in 18 months. Now it's three, four, four and a half years or longer, depending on the outside date. You know, you have to be able to complete on it. You also should definitely have a, like with any real estate, have a long-term holding period on that because you've got the 5% GST right away and the 2% PTT. So on a million dollar condo, right there you've got $60,000, $80,000 that's out the window as soon as you get the keys. So you better be able to hold on to it. If the market's down, at least be able, when you do get the keys, complete on it, uh, hang on to it until the market recovers or perhaps have to put a tenant in it if you have to to keep it until the market recovers. But you have to be able to complete. Not a month goes by, you know, you don't hear a lot of these stories in the media, but you hear the success stories about buying a pre-sale and you move into it and you've made a hundred grand. Those are great. But every month, every, I get several calls from people, or emails, usually help me is the title on the email. You know, I bought a pre-sale, I'm getting ready to, it's getting ready to complete and I can't complete on it. I can't get the financing now. I thought I could four years ago, now things have changed and I need you to sell it. Well, usually the answer to that is I'll have to, I have to look into it, but usually they won't let me put it on the MLS uh, because the reason is, is because the developer, again, has all the angles covered. They hold back units and they don't want the competition. They won't let me put it on the MLS. So now we have to do a private deal. It can be done, but you're not going to get full market price on a private deal. People are going to want to lowball you on this. That's what you're getting into. With, with pre-sale, I had a call two weeks ago from a guy, and this is common too, moved into his pre-sale condo. He was supposed to get a 450 square foot deck or balcony, and the developer made some changes to the podium level, and now his balcony is 110 square feet. You know, what do I do? Can you help me, Owen? No, I can't. You, this is a job for a, real, for a lawyer. I, consult, I sent him a name of a couple of real, real, um, lawyers Send the contract to purchase and sale to them and tell them your story. But I had to tell them the chances of you getting any recourse from the developer are slim. They have the right to change those things. It's in your contract to purchase and sale and it's in the disclosure statement. I'll give you a last little thing here, just on pre-sales. Again, I'm not gonna throw all pre-sales under the bus, but just remember these rules here that I, that I tell you guys to follow. And I would say before you buy any pre-sale, have your realtor show you some tangible product. Because remember, any appreciation on the pre-sale condo can be matched by buying a tangible unit. You could buy a tangible unit right now and in four years, it's worth more than what you paid for it now. There's no real advantage to appreciation. The only advantage that people love about pre-sale is the layaway program. But the layaway program isn't even all that much anymore. It used to be you could buy pre-sale with 5% down. That was it. You could, you could assign it if you wanted. You could put it on the MLS. There was no fees to assign it. Now that's all gone. Now you need 20% down in installments. You can't put it on the MLS to assign it if you get into trouble. And if you do, if they do allow you to assign it, they want uh, a cut of any lift, the developer does, of any profits on it. Everything is switched over. It used to be all in the buyer's favor 15 years ago. Now it's all in the developer's favor. So it can make sense. I'm gonna throw it on the bus, but be careful with pre-sale. Give you an example here. I've got some, a couple of clients right now who are looking at luxury condos in Coal Harbor. That's a good market to be in if you're a buyer. If you're looking for a three, four, five million dollar condo, that market is soft right now and getting softer as we go. 
There's a fair bit of inventory. Units are on, on the market for a while. You've got some uh, luxury newer builds that have hit the market here in the last couple of years and some more coming. And uh, yeah, compared to the one bedroom market or even the two bedroom under a million dollars, this is, a, uh, is definitely favoring the buyers here. But I had a look at a couple of newer luxury condos here. I'm not gonna give you the names of the building. We'll, we'll say it's in Coal Harbor. I'll give you one in particular here. It's in Coal Harbor, good builder, nice uh, strata. This is my first time in here. Uh, it's about uh, 18 months old. Uh, luxury uh, unit for sure. This is a two bed, two bath with one parking, which I'm gonna get to in a minute. Um, these people bought this 18 months ago with GST for just over $3.4 million. Uh, they got the keys on it in October of 2020. They immediately, for whatever reason, things had changed. They obviously weren't gonna move into it now, or maybe they thought they'd make a bunch of money on it and flip it when they get the keys. They immediately put it on the market for 3.6. So paid three, four fifty, put it on the market for three, six. That was mistake number one. Um, they're trying to get out, which often happens. Let's try and make a little bit of money on this if we can. Sat on the market, didn't do anything for about 190 days. Then they reduced it to 3,299,000 uh, in uh, May of, of 2021. And they've been systematically reducing it since. The other mistake they made is, I guess, I'm not sure who's giving them counsel with this, but somebody gave them the harebrained idea, well, while we're trying to sell it, why don't you put a tenant in it? So here is a $3.5 million, two bed, two bath, and they put a tenant in it, fixed term tenancy for the first year, for one year, at $5,000 a month. So this is one of the only areas that if you're looking to rent, it's not a bad deal. You've got a $3.5 million condo here you can rent for $5,000. That is a tremendous bargain for the tenant in this situation. So here they listed it at 3.6 uh, and put a tenant in it on a fixed term tenancy for a year. So your chances of selling this now are incredibly difficult because investors aren't gonna buy this unit. The, the buyer for this unit is going to be a principal residence buyer. So cut to the chase here. They've systematically reduced this. They're now down to 3.1 million. So they're looking at a big loss already. I went and looked at the unit. The unit is a mess, of course. It's tenanted, junk everywhere. It's a modern contemporary building, very nice. Uh, but the tenants, of course, have got colonial furniture in there that it looks you know, like it's out of the Civil War or something era. Yeah, it doesn't go very well at all with the with the overall finishings of the unit. It's massive furniture, cluttered. The second bedroom has got boxes stacked up to the ceiling. You can't even get into the second bedroom. Uh, clutter everywhere. It's a mess. So that's the other mistake. If you're going to sell a luxury unit, and I'm surprised at how many of these I see in areas like Coal Harbor and the West End, three, four, five million dollar units that are only two, three, four years old with tenants in there get the tenant out, you have no hope of selling this unit for anywhere near what you're gonna want with a tenant in there at a low rent and in some cases on a fixed term tenancy. You've got this incredibly new unit, but you can't see anything with it because the tenants have got everything in there. It's, it's penny wise, pound foolish, collecting a measly $5,000 a month rent on a $3.5 million unit and you're showing the thing to potential buyers. Here's the kicker though. Again, they paid, as I said, just over $3.4 million. For that price range, you should get, and you would expect to get two full-size parking spaces, large parking spaces. This unit has one parking space. So I was curious, let's go have a look at the parking. I wanted to see everything because I hadn't been in this strata yet. I wanna see the amenities, the fitness center, which was mediocre, uh, I have to say. In this price category, I was expecting a lot more. The parking space, to my amazement, I was expecting a large, if you're only gonna get one parking, it better be a good one. And it was a compact or mid-size parking space. In other words, you would have very difficult to get a, even a mid-size SUV in there. Um, you could, for sure, but you'd have to make a couple of runs at it. It was beside a pillar. The, the stall in the middle had a large full-size SUV in the middle and then another spot to the other side. So nuts. I mean, the buyer for this type of unit is probably going to have two cars and 
if he's got a you know a mid or full size SUV or let's call it a four door Mercedes or BMW, he is gonna. Be, I don't think a full size BMW or Mercedes could get into this parking spot. This is the type of parking spot I would normally see on a six hundred and twenty five thousand dollar one bed or a studio even. Terrible, but this is typical too because. The city, of course, has cut down on how many parking spaces can go into, the, into these new stratas. But it never amazes me, rather than putting in, uh, you know, 160 good size parking spaces, they decide to squeeze out 170 spaces that are all useless. It wipes all of them out. So, it, but this is again, one of the perils of pre-sale. I've had people talk to me about they've got their parking space, because everything's sight unseen when you're buying pre-sale. They've got duct work or low piping work in their parking space. space. So they can't back in their, their SUV into the parking space or the car sticks out. There was just a story on the news the other day about the parking spaces being, the city uh, regulates how, how wide a parking spot can be, the minimum width. And it turned out this, these spots in this new uh, strata were actually three inches too narrow for the city bylaws. But that one parking space on a small parking spot on a, on a unit of this price is a deal breaker. A total deal breaker. Now, they're sitting at 3.1 million now. They're not going to get 3.1. They don't have a hope on this. This probably, maybe, if they got aggressive here, got the tenant out, cleaned the unit up, staged it, drop the price down to let's call it 2999 maybe they'll have a shot. Uh, but the market for these right now is trending lower month over month, not going up. So they're one step behind it here. Maybe they get 28 for this unit. So when the smoke clears, they're looking at uh, after commissions and everything else, easily a half million dollar loss on this unit. Uh, they just don't know it yet. <laughs> you know, again, if this was my listing or they approach me on this, I'd say you're overpriced. A, let's get the tenant out. You're going to have to probably pay fifteen or twenty thousand dollars now to get this tenant out. He's on month to month. He doesn't want to leave at five thousand dollars a month. Why would he? They're now going to have to really compensate him heavily. Get a mutual agreement in tenancy. Get him out. Clean the unit up. That's going to cost us fifteen hundred bucks right there, and and uh, get it staged. And that's what you should be doing to sell this. But in the meantime, they're just going to chase this market down. They're going to be one step behind. Who knows where this is going to land? This might end up at 2.7. This guy could lose six, $650,000. That's what these can do for you. So be careful. Pre-sale developers now have a new clause in there uh, that will allow for construction increases or inflation increases over 4%. So the price you pay at pre-sale may not be the final price. Again, Pre-sale can make sense in some cases. Every now and again, I do sell them. You know, the better way to go though, just quickly, if you wanna be in a certain building, wait till the building is almost complete because the developers now are holding back a lot more units than they used to. They used to sell about 80, 90% pre-sale. Now they're holding back a lot more units and they'll release those units as tangible product when the building gets occupancy. So now you can go in, look at the counters, look at the parking space, look at the amenities, touch everything, and, and buy it tangible now if you really want to be in a, new, in a new building. Or even better, just wait until six months, a year after the building is complete. There'll be lots of listings in there. You can go after one of the owner-occupied listings and probably save your GST. And again, it's tangible. More advantages there. I'm Old Big Wayne. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.